The National Prosecuting Authority has issued a warrant of arrest for Khairad Ackerman, who is accused of running a child sex ring. Ackerman failed to present a doctor's note on Friday after failing to appear in court on Thursday. He faces 740 charges, including child pornography and human trafficking. He was charged alongside senior advocate and acting judge Paul Kennedy, who committed suicide a few months after his arrest. If I was your son, would you like me to go to prison? No. What did I do wrong? Tell me. Do you believe you did nothing wrong? Yes. What did I do wrong? Tell me. You can't tell me. The father of one of Gerard Ackerman's alleged victims says he was initially against his son moving to Johannesburg but was reassured telephonically by a man named Gerry that the opportunity was above board. Is it a legit business that they will only learn to do massage? There's no sexual no touching, no funny businesses. And he informed me that it is a legit business. The whole time while we were driving back to Kestel, my son was saying, sorry, daddy, sorry, daddy, I'm so sorry. And then his son confirmed the worst. He told me that he had to massage the clients and then he had to touch the clients and play with the clients and he had to let the clients touch him and play with him and do things to him that are involved. We must be disgusted, we must be appalled as South Africans and we need to hold our justice system accountable. This thing is completely completely unacceptable. There was no even need for a whole high court judge to have to deal with bail applications if this man was never ever released on bail. And then, you know, these pretty people can kind of manipulate a system to suit them, you know, and their rights are upheld, you know, at the expense of the rights of the public. Hi everyone, I am here, I am alive, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So, so many things have happened since we've last spoken. As some of you may or may not know, I've moved to the UK. Life has been crazy. I've been trying to adapt. And the last time you saw me, I was living with family. Now we're in our own flat and things have just run a thousand kilometers an hour and I'm just trying to catch up. So thankfully, I've been adapting. I've been learning as we go. And finally, I am more settled. But if you're interested in anything about the immigration process that I've been through or with some of the stuff I'm getting up to, I will link my other channel down below and also my immigration process up here. But thank you to everyone who has sent me such a lovely message, emailed me. I see all your comments on YouTube. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you and your patience. But that's enough waffling from me. We really need to get into this case. It's a lot. It's a long one. So maybe grab a snack or something to drink because it is hectic. And today we're going to talk about the case of Gerard Ackerman and how he ran this crime syndicate right under everybody's nose with someone who we should be completely able to trust, who is part of our legal system. And it is just one mad case. But with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences. Today we are in Johannesburg, South Africa, where in 1970, Gerard Ackerman was born. Gerard was born into a family that was hardworking. His family worked hard for everything they had and his dad taught him to have a tough mindset and to do whatever he can to succeed. Gerard's father's job was unknown, but he was the main breadwinner in the family. His mom was a stay-at-home mom and Gerard grew up in a very religious and strict household. There are very conflicting reports about whether he's married or has any children, and his private life is pretty difficult to confirm. Harrod knew how to keep things quiet and kept things under the rug really well. With that little bit of backstory, if we get back to Harrod, we just have to get straight into it. 2023, last year now, was not the first time that police knew about Harrod Ackerman and was not the first time that he had done heinous and disgusting crimes. And clearly, based on how many times Harrod was caught by police, not put into prison, or if he was put into prison, there's clearly no rehabilitating Gerard because as soon as he was put on bail, he went straight back to doing what he was arrested for. So to start, 
in 2007, Gerard was camping in an area called Hartenbos. And this is a beautiful area within the Western Cape. Everyone's camping, drinking, brying, having a really good time. And there, two boys come screaming and running back to their parents, pointing at Gerard, because he had allegedly just exposed himself to a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old boy. And as far as I could see, no jail time or punishment was done for exposing himself to these boys in 2007. So Gerard obviously felt, well, I wasn't caught here. Maybe I can get away with doing a bit more. Then, just two years after the incident in 2007, Gerard and his two young boys happened to be at the same camping site once again, where he then sexually assaulted these two young boys. This camping site was a favorite place for locals and families alike, and clearly Gerard knew this. And because no one did anything, Gerard was just free to roam. He was free to walk around and do as he pleased. Then, if we skip forward around 10 years, in 2018, Gerard Ackerman was at Sunning Hill Swimming Pool in Gauteng, where he was then accused of pleasing himself in front of the boys in the changing room. The boys were around 11 years old at the time, and this is all alleged. And then later on in 2018, so the same year, this was the first time that Gerard was actually chased down by police and arrested for the crime. But in 2018, later on in the year, Gerard was charged with forcing an 11-year-old boy to rub his private at an upmarket country club in Johannesburg. But not only that, the only reason that security actually came to chase him out was that after he had done this to the 11-year-old boy, he was found again in the changing rooms, in the corner, trying to hide away, but then pleading himself while the boys were getting undressed and changed. And then an adult walked in and saw Gerard. He chased him out. Security then tried to get him as well. But Gerard then hopped into his BMW vehicle and then crashed through the booms to try and get away from security. But because Gerard was at this upmarket country club, there was CCTV footage of him and police then found him and arrested him. Now, this crime, once he was arrested, he was then granted 5,000 Rand bail in 2018. So awaiting trial, he was then released with no consequence of what he had done. He just knew that he paid the 5,000 Rand and now he was going to head out back into society. Then between 2018, early 2019, to around 2022 was when the most heinous crimes would take place while Gerard was awaiting trial. And later, Gerard Ackerman would be charged with over 700 crimes. Now with these crimes that Gerard committed, allegedly, Gerard was not alone. And I say allegedly because the person who he acted with and who was his alleged accomplice took his own life before the trial could commence and before he was legally found guilty in a court of law. At the end of 2022, when both men were arrested, this person was also released on bail where he then took his own life. And during the trial, some of the boys came forward to talk about what Harat had done, what this other person had done, and it's a really uncomfortable trial to watch. He testified that the accused did not looked like the person who appeared on the photograph which was sent to him. The accused asked him to remove his shirt and pants and to lie on the massage table. The accused started to massage him from his ankles up to his calves, calf area, and from there to his thighs and buttocks. The accused then got on top of him whilst having an action. He then rubbed his anus. As they said no to the accused. However, the accused continued and did not listen to him. He inserted his into SJ's hands. SJ testified that he cringed and he surrendered. The accused penetrated him and the pain was excruciating. The, the accused said to him that he was a client, that he has a client for him who would arrive at 8 p.m. He had to massage the client and play with the clients in inverted hours. When the client arrived, SJ started to massage the client. The accused went outside, and he learned later that the accused peeped through the window and observed him whilst he was busy with the client. But if we stop and just talk about the second accomplice quickly, the person I'm talking about is a South African senior advocate and an acting judge named Paul Kennedy. And if it could not get any more ironic, Paul worked as a human rights lawyer. So if we get into what these two allegedly did, so we have a background of what Harold allegedly did in 2007, and 2009 or 2008 
and then again in 2018. But between 2018, when Harald was released on bail, Paul and Harald would commit heinous crimes together, and they would do this for years without getting caught. So Harald would then go on Facebook and other social media sites where he would try and target boys, young men, or under the age of 18 years old, usually between 14 and 17 years old. He would try and target boys who came from poorer homes, troubled homes, and some articles would say that Harold would get in touch with one boy, coerce him to come and work for him, where he would then befriend him, let him trust him, and try and get information out of this young boy to tell him about more friends that he knows, other friends that he knows that he could try and bring in and work for him as well. So Harold would then try and recruit one boy, get other boys who he knew, kind of like a very weird pyramid scheme of bringing in other people based on one person. This is all alleged and this is not the only tactic that Harold used. He would generally try and communicate with many different boys of many different ages on social media and he would lure them in very often during this way and very successfully. So what Harold would do once he contacted these boys on social media, what he would do is he would groom them and he would talk to them. He would be like, oh, I'm your best friend. I can do so much for you. We can make you really rich. Just come work for me. We can get you out of this life. You don't need to be here anymore. Let me be your friend and let me help you. I'm a genuine guy and I just want to make sure that you're okay. That kind of thing. I remember these boys are young. Most of them were between 14 and 17 years old. And those are just the average ages. They are younger as well, sadly. But Kara didn't just message them and quickly jump into it. He was very calculated. He would talk to them over quite a long period of time and he would really get them to trust him as best as he could to try and get them to move into his home and to work as a masseuse or someone who would massage people for money. And many of the boys who would talk later in trial would say that Harold was successful sometimes because they came from broken homes, they came from poor homes, and also there was a stigma in many of their families where they had a lot of pressure to provide for the family as well. They had to go and find work quickly. There was not a lot of money in the home and all hands on deck for trying to find money. So Harold knew exactly what he was doing and the boys really didn't have much choice. They felt like there wasn't a lot of work and this guy was nice. He was patient, he was kind and he was providing them with money, a home and a way out. And what happened to these young boys, I can only imagine how trapped they must have felt because Harold would mostly lure a lot of these boys from faraway places within the same province or he would lure them from other places and other provinces. So when coming to work for Harald in his home and living there, they felt like they had nowhere to go because they didn't know where to go. They had stayed in the same province for years. They lived there. They've never traveled out, most of them. And now Harald was luring them to come to a different province. So of course they felt trapped. And I do want to point out that a lot of these boys also felt trapped because they were young teenage boys, sometimes really young, and they had been assaulted by Harald or other men. They felt like they had nowhere to go because there is a stigma that boys cannot speak about this. And no, not only women get assaulted, it happens to men very often as well. And they maybe felt that they couldn't speak up because it was taboo or they should have stuck up for themselves. But it's not like that and we really should talk about it. And everybody should be protected. But when the boys were at Harald's house and they were massaging clients, some of the clients, yes, they just came in for a massage to look at these young men and then they would leave. However, majority of them, 90% of them, wanted more. And what Harold would do is he would talk to the clients and he would negotiate a price. And depending on what you would end up doing with the boys would be then dependent on price. When police eventually got hold of Harold Ackman's phone, they found around 168 different clients on his phone, and these were mostly the regulars. So police assumed that they were one-night guys who would come through, and Harrod generally wouldn't keep them on his phone, and imagine how many more clients there must have been than rather the regulars. In one WhatsApp conversation, a client named Client Come Ads on Harrod's phone inquired about the boys, their ages, and the prices. While Harrod generally tried to delete several of the responses, it's clear that the inquiry between the men asking about the massaging was not only about massaging. The clients would often ask if the boys were willing to do bottom and also asked about the prices for massage and, in inverted commas, fun. 
one of the teenagers would later testify, who was only 14 years old at the time, that a man named Mr. Combrink picked him and a few other boys from the home in Joburg. The 14-year-old then told the court that Mr. Combrink allegedly touched his private parts and said he wanted to see what the child was working with. The teenagers were allegedly told to massage Mr. Combrink while he lay on the massage table naked. These were only some of the text messages that happened and the clips that I'll show you, it's incredibly gruesome and incredibly violating and I just can't imagine what these boys had to go through. But remember I spoke about acting judge Paul Kennedy, the human rights lawyer. He wasn't only Harrod's biggest client who was there very often, he was also an accomplice allegedly. And what he would do, because remember I said that the boys would come from different provinces, but they often struggled to get there because they had no money. That's the entire reason that they wanted to come work in Joburg with Harrod. But how they got there was that Paul would arrange for these boys to get there via different transport. So he was a transport man most of the time. He would get the boys, he would recruit many of the boys, and he would get them from province to province to get to Joburg. And he would often recruit boys from the Free State, allegedly. And when talking about the crimes, we cannot omit that Paul Kennedy, one of his crimes was attempted murder. And the reason why he was accused of attempted murder was because Paul Kennedy was HIV positive and the boys that he would sleep with, he would not use protection and he was willingly, knowingly and actively sleeping with these young men, knowing that he was HIV positive and potentially passing this on to them. Paul Kennedy was also where a lot of the money would come from for Harrod to recruit these boys. He, like I said, would pay for most of the transportation. He would facilitate their food and stuff like that. So he was really where the money came from. Yes, we had several meetings about this, that, yes. he, that he shouldn't do it. You had several meetings and then, because, the only reason you had several meetings with Sir Ackerman was because it was an important issue. Otherwise, you wouldn't have worried about it. Yes. In your mind, he has a 15-year-old who wants to do happy endings, and you know it's against the law, and you tell him, no, 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 you're not going to do it. And he insists, no, I want to do it. And you allow him. That is correct, my lord. I allowed him. Yes. So you were quite happy to break the law. Uh, well, um... You were quite happy to break the law, sir. You had quite a few meetings, and this child insists, now I want to do this. Why didn't you just tell him, look, pack your bags, there's the Uber, go back home. I don't want to break no law. I'm a law-abiding citizen. All I can say is what's true for me and in my heart. Um, if somebody wants to do something, I'm not there to judge them or to tell them they're not allowed to. Now, while watching a lot of these trial videos, I noticed that Harrod would often say that, but the boys wanted to do it. It wasn't me. They knew what they were getting up to. They said they wanted to come to this massage parlor and that they knew exactly what they were doing while working here. They wanted to sleep with these men. Now, I don't believe it. Maybe there was some sense of Stockholm syndrome for these boys who felt like they had to. But there was such a disconnect with Harrod and how he felt that the boys felt. He was so kind and considerate during text and to try and lure these boys in. But when the boys actually spoke and said they didn't want to sleep with these men, Harrod was like, then what did you think you came here for? Or like, I don't understand. There was just such an alleged cruel and vindictive and straight to the point when the boys were actually with Harrod, allegedly. And how the actual investigation started was when one young brave boy happened to be on the streets, he was running errands, and he happened to cross a police officer's path. And he sat down with the police officer, he was like, please can I talk to you, I really need to say something. And he started speaking about exactly what was happening at this massage parlor. The police officer believed him, and that's how the investigation started in 2021, 2022, when Harrod and Paul were arrested. The young man would describe to the police officer how he was rented out, often by Harrod, to many men. And roughly, Harrod would take around two grand per boy whenever someone would sleep with the boys. So what Harrod would do is when these boys were taken to the massage parlor at first, he would then be really nice. He would feed them, he would bathe them, and then he would teach them how to massage clients, ease them into it. And then once they started massaging the clients, it was just a switch. He would make them slowly then do oral 
or he would then force him to do other stuff. And it would just escalate slowly and slowly until it was full sexual encounter with these grown men. Gerard would often film the sexual encounters between the clients. He would take pictures of the teenagers or boys in very precarious positions. And he would also often watch them. So really, really creepy stuff. So because most of these children were under the age of 18, Gerard filming taking pictures of them in precarious positions was child porn. And there were hundreds, if not thousands, of films and images of these boys. Apparently, when Harold's phone was taken away by police or confiscated, there were around 650 photographs of different boys. And there were also around 260 videos of the boys. And around 300 to 400 film and photos on his laptop. When Harold Ackerman was arrested, he was actually allowed to go on bail for only six thousand rand and once Gerard paid his bail he then went on the run. Eventually police found Gerard Ackerman when he was spotted and grabbed by members of the public at Florida Junction shopping center in Rudaport. Once he was captured by police he was then sent to prison where he is today. Mr Ackerman you are sentenced to 12 life sentences. You are sentenced to five years imprisonment on each of the attempted murder counts. In terms of Section 280 of the Criminal Procedure Act, I ordered that the sentences on the eight counts of attempted murder should run concurrently. 15. Concerning counts 1 to 253, the pornographic images which were found on the accused cellular phone, the prosecution submitted that the accused should be sentenced to 10 years for each count. This would imply that the sentence which ought to be imposed would be 2,530 years, which Mr. Albert submitted would merely be for show purposes. Mr. Albert submitted that such a sentence would be impractical as the accused would have to serve the rest of his natural life in prison. He submitted that the court should impose a sentence taking into account the cumulative effect of the punishment in order that the sentences run concurrently with the life sentences. The accused is sentenced to 25 years imprisonment on counts 1 to 253. 17. Counts 264 to counts 640 relate to pornographic material which was retrieved from the accused's computer. The accused testified that he was unaware of the images of the young boys performing lewd acts such as other acts. He suggested that the boys who lived with him posted these images onto his computer, sentenced to 25 years imprisonment on these counts. 18. Counts 640, 641, 642, 643, and 645. These counts concern child pornography or pursuing pornography. The accused was instrumental in making videos of the victims which he distributed to his clients. He is sentenced to four years imprisonment on each count. I ordered that these sentences on these counts should be served concurrently with each other. With this case, it is so easy to put blame on police, and there is a lot that could have been done and should have been done to protect these boys. There were questions as to why Harrod was allowed bail in the first place, why his bail was so cheap, and also with Paul Kennedy, why was he allowed on bail? And look what happened when he was on bail. He then ended his life. And now the victims are robbed of their justice. Another legal expert believed that 6,000 Rand bail might have been a small price to pay for someone charged with such heinous crimes. So let me know what you think of this case. It is really shocking, really disgusting and disturbing about how Harrod was able to get away with so many things. And we really need to learn as a country to protect those who need it the most. And the children should have never been put in that situation at all in the first place. But with that being said, let me know what you think of this case. It's a bit of a long one and where so much could have been avoided. I really hope that you're all doing well. I missed you so much. And if you would like to see what I'm getting up to in the UK, I will link my channel down below. But thank you for everything. I'm wishing you all the best and to have a wonderful new year. And I will see you again soon. Bye.